Well, well, well. <laughs> what? How about that game? Notre Dame beating Florida State 41-38 to in overtime. Just a crazy game, um, really, from start to finish. Notre Dame, again, just pulling out a wild one. Um, I, I don't even really know where to start, Tim, but um, just... Uh, Wow. What what are kind of your opening thoughts here? I'm, I'm Mike Singer, Blue and Gold Recruiting Insider, Tim Hyde, longtime uh, college football coach, JUCO, or uh, excuse me, JUCO coach, high school coach in the state of California, longtime Notre Dame follower. Initial thoughts on the game, Tim. I'm sure you could uh, go for a while talking about this one. Well, I mean, it's, it's basically what I said the other day when you and I uh, chatted is you, you got to win game one. Remember, I, I literally said I just got to win game one. No matter what happens, don't worry about the point spreads, things of that nature. You got to win game one. And lo and behold, Notre Dame won game one. And I heard Brian Kelly talk about that in the in the post game there with ABC about, hey, you know, it's a lot better to make adjustments, watch film after a, a win than it is a loss, even though it was a, a hard fought three pointer that um, I'm sure uh, the diehard Notre Dame fans felt like they were watching 2011 uh, Notre Dame in Michigan there in the chicken the chicken dance game. So uh, that's what it felt like watching that fourth quarter. Desmond Robinson going off in 11, but uh thought Mackenzie Melton <laughs> was turning into Desmond Robinson uh, once again. But a uh, heck of a football game. There's no doubt about that. Definitely. We'll appreciate everyone who has joined us live so far uh, for our post-game show here. Appreciate you guys watching us live again. If you're watching – back the replay of it uh appreciate you guys as well if you're listening via podcast channel uh, on sunday or monday i really appreciate that as well um definitely hit the super chat you know to help support what we're doing here at blue and gold um we're going to 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 discuss some various topics at the top of the show here um but we are very easily bought um if you want to drop us a super chat we will get to your comment right away um so mr martin We appreciate the super chat. It says this it seemed like the offensive play calling was all over the place and the defensive play calling in the fourth quarter um, was atrocious. I guess let's just get right into this. And we yeah. appreciate the super chat and comment, Mr. Martin. I, when I was taking notes, um, Tim, Notre Dame goes up 38-20. I tweeted out from the Blue and Gold Twitter account, Notre Dame is rolling. Notre Dame had a, such a great first drive of the game. And then that third quarter, they had three straight drives. Um, with touchdowns, let me pull up the, um, the, the, the drive chart. Look at that four plays, yeah. 75 yards, seven plays, 69 yards, three plays, um, 32 yards, um, it, it all scores there. Um, just really impressive. I mean, what, what changed? What, what happened to him? Well, I mean, I mean, number one, obviously it was a tight nail biter at halftime. I think Notre Dame went in there, regrouped and they came out, you know, barnstorm in that third quarter jumped up really big time and then um i mean you had back-to-back drives you know, I, I know i was you know t- texting with you talking about i thought they looked tired and gassed on notre dame's d they gave up 75 and you go give up 75 yards 88 yards back-to-back drives it was the edges i thought notre dame started to give up the edges you go back and watch some of it you know just some of the notes i was taking as well is uh you know, Travis was running outside. They were getting outside a little bit. The ends were going underneath blocks. And then um, I know the strength is Notre Dame's defense and or their D-line. And they started going to more of a three-man front, it looked like, and and whatnot. And uh, and their three linebackers. It looked like they had Kaiser, Bertrand, and uh, Bauer out there, you know, quite a bit. Bauer and, uh, you know, White rotating here and there. But, um, hey, it's emotion. I mean, so much of this football game was also – I know some of the comments that we were chatting about the other day in our in our uh, preview show was the emotion. Yeah, Florida Florida State just played their tails off, and they just refused to lose. When it was thirty eight twenty, they could have folded. They could have you know this could have been the last three years of Florida State, and it wasn't. And they just went right down the field, scored. Then like once again, then Notre Dame goes three and out. Boom, Florida State goes eighty eight yards, and it was just you know it's, it's momentum. It's college football. It's game one. It's what was it? 95% humidity, whatever it was down in Tallahassee. And so much of those things start to add up. Uh, it's game one. It was Florida State's, it was Florida State's, you know, Super Bowl. They're, you know, they got Jacksonville State next. So I, you know, I, I, I think they, they went all in on this game. And Notre Dame came away with the win. So at the end of the day, it's all that matters. 
You know, it's funny, Tim. You've referenced our uh, our pregame show that we posted on Friday a couple times now, and you just said, "Yeah, it's game one. Just get out of there with the win." You're yeah. you're a football coach. You know that. It's. I've heard several other football coaches talk about high school ball. Like it, for their game ones, just win. That's really all that matters. Get out of there with the win. For most of this game, I felt like Notre Dame was. I, I didn't have any doubt until that last drive. Um, Notre Dame was lucky to, um, you know, that FSU just kicked field goal and and, and then in overtime, you know, it was like, man, this Notre Dame defense looked gassed, but they held yeah. up. The J.D. Bertrand blitz, what what a crazy sequence that was. Let me get to that real quick. Sure. Got a couple super chats. Uh, Bill Mahoney <laughs> dropping us a quick five spot. Really appreciate that. If you have a question, make sure um, you let us know. Um, Tom, appreciate it there as well. Joseph dropping a super chat. They're just rolling in at this point, guys. We really appreciate um, this. Tons of questions. Um, huge group with us today. Um, Jacob Dunn, we will get to your question here in just a second. The DJ hair, air horn's going crazy. Um, but that J.D. Bertrand blitz in overtime, um, just crazy, right? So it, oh, yeah. it was called a fumble. So it was a 50-yard yep. field goal. The Florida State kicker makes it. But yep. Yep. the play is called dead. FSU challenges it. They win the challenge on the tuck rule. Ball gets marched up to the 37. And then the kid misses it. And then it. Notre Dame's, I talked about that 38-20. Notre Dame defense stunk the rest of the game other than that overtime drive defense you know stood up Notre Dame offense stunk too even in that uh, uh that the overtime drive very yeah. vanilla uh run very up the middle vanilla. that stopped I, I, I actually like the play call on, on the boot throw it out to mayor get the ball to your best player safe play floor state player made a nice uh play on the ball and then I guess on that third down Tommy Reese basically was like let's just keep the ball in the right hash for Jonathan maybe maybe uh pick up a few yards um, any thoughts on, on that? I mean, I, I think that pretty much well, set up. And any thoughts on that kind of? Um, oh yeah, well, the, well, the third down play is yeah, they kept it on the right hash, and usually you want to put the ball down the middle of the field. So if they, I mean, they went ultra vanilla, just like yeah, unless that's what Dor said. Is I, like, I hey, think keep that's it on the right what I would guess. Yeah, yeah, I that's what I, I mean because they didn't mean attempt to even get. It. I mean, they just uh, like it's basically just a rugby play. Let's just go over there and kill clock and kick a field goal. But uh, but who would have thought that really the Maybe the the hidden play of the game was the Houston Griffith blitz that knocked Travis out of the game. You know, because I was never. It felt like Notre Dame was in complete control of this game, just just all game, even when it was tight or when they were down early. You just always felt like, all right, Notre Dame's going to do this, they're going right. to do that, they're going to rally. Florida State had a couple big plays, obviously some nice some nice things that they were doing, and then Houston Griffith just you know. You know, Coach Freeman brings him way up, way from deep, deep safety. Knocks Travis's helmet off. He's out. Mackenzie Melton comes in like it's a Disneyland movie and just goes off. What was it? It was uh, someone had posted it was a thousand, what, 60 days, something like that, that he had yet, that he had not played. So, um, and he comes in and it was just magical. Just magical. Looked like essential Florida days, you know? Yep, certainly hats off to Mackenzie Milton, the FSU coaching staff, players, heck of a game, great college football game. Um, super chat here from Jacob Dunn, again, appreciate it. He uh, says, without signing hyperbolic, is this the weakest O-line unit Notre Dame has had in years? Now, Tim, you were texting me earlier in the game. I know you were wa- you love O-line play. That, that's your oh, yeah. butter. You are watching Blake Fisher closely. He went down. Michael Carmody replaced him at left tackle. I mean, it, it would be tough to say whether or not this is a weak O-line or not after one game. But when you look at the stats, oh, man. I mean, Notre Dame is such yeah. a – I mean, run the football, right? Net rushing yards, 65 on 35 attempts. Now, that, there's a couple sacks in there. The sure. college football stats, they, they don't adjust for sacks like the NFL does. But average – I mean, look at that. one. That's two yards yeah. a pop. That's not that's very good. good. So what, what are your yards. thoughts on the, on the O-line and the rushing game? Well, I mean, they, I mean, they had some nice runs at times, obviously, but I mean, overall, uh, when I was, wa- when I was watching it early on, I thought, I thought the guard play was kind of average. I thought, I thought uh, Zeke Carell got pushed around a little bit, 
once again, he's on the lighter side compared to what they, you know, compared to Aaron Banks and uh, Tommy Kramer the last few years. And even Madden. I mean, Madden is a good little, you know, you know, you know, bull in a china shop, so to speak, you know, fire plug type guy in there. I thought he played hard. But at the same time, Florida State just played vicious up front. I mean, they were just loading the box and they got some dudes that played man. And they were just like, we're going to play man all over the place and load the box and and come after you. Um, I thought Tyree, Tyree, I think had one nice run early in the game. Other than that, I thought he tiptoed a little bit. Kyron Williams just, I mean, he ran hard. And, you know, but then the other thing, the hidden, once again, this 21, 2021 football team is going to have, you're not going to have Ian Book. I mean, Cone, to, to be very nice, can't run. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. But he does things that Book can't, that touchdown pass to Austin. Sure. How often did we see that with yeah. Ian Book? Well, he is really good that mid range. I mean, he's got that. He's got some nice touch. He can't, he can't throw deep. I think we kind of saw his limitations on how far he can throw the vertical pass. Uh, are you talking about on the, the on the the last play of the a, game, the pick? Well, no, not even that. The Lindsey one. I mean, Lindsey runs by the corner and he underthrows him. Yeah, I think that was in the. But uh, I'd have to check the, the notes on that one. But Lindsey just runs right by the corner and he underthrows him. So I don't know. But yeah, I'm not worried about the hill, uh, the hill Mary pass, but uh, yeah, but even that was 10, 15 yards short. He was, he, he was throwing; he wasn't set up. To no, he was long, just but, yeah, yeah, he was just chucking up. But going back to the old line, I thought Fisher was playing really. good. If you go back and watch the first half, Fisher was was yeah. was really really good, and he got hurt. I know I I sent you that picture. I noticed it. Carmody was in the next series. Yeah, I, I did a quick rewind there, and it looked like his own guy hit him. Uh, what happened? Williams and Keen Madden had picked Tim, up a blitz. Quick, quick update from Brian Kelly's press conference. Patrick Angle, beat writer, bloomgold.com, just tweeted out Brian Kelly said Blake Fisher has a strain in his knee, no ACL or MCL damage. So that is great news. That's huge. That's huge. Because you could tell, I mean, he's stone number 11. Just just put him in his spot on that touchdown to uh, Wilkins. And, um, and it looked like Madden was blocking a guy and got, it looked like he ran into Fisher. So, um, Carmody obviously played good, you know, but he's the third tackle. He's the third tackle. Got beat up by a true freshman, but Fisher's Fisher's going to be a great, great football player, yeah. you know. But overall, I thought Mayer had some outstanding blocks outside. Uh, obviously, got to go back and rewatch some of it, but um, his you drops. know, Oof, man. It, it, his drops. He had three, literally three drops. Three drops. Obviously, the one at the end. He had a first down one early in the game. He had another one. He had three drops tonight. Three drops that all would have been first down plays. We'll appreciate everyone who has joined us so far. Got a huge group here uh, live with us on YouTube. If you're here watching us live or watching it back, please hit that thumbs up on this video um, to help support what we're doing here at Blue and Gold. If you're listening via podcast, um, you know, please leave us a good review. Go to blueandgold.com for all the coverage. Tyler Horka, Patrick Angle do a really good job covering. Um, you're fighting Irish. We've got another super chat here. Sorry about this. The delay in posting this here, Richard. Uh, definitely appreciate the super chat. This is something that yep. I texted you about, Tim, was yep. uh, this goes back to that 38-20. Unless they mm-hmm. went to a, th- a three-man down bef- uh, before that. But it seemed like that's when they really went to that, whether it's a 3-4, three, 3-3-5. Three, three, it, it just seemed like very vanilla um, coaching, you know, and, and kind of – the what what they were trying to do on defense so richard says can someone please tell me why we were three down while being extremely tired yeah they definitely look gassed out there freeman hype was too mm-hmm. crazy was the moment too big for this guy the game was in hand and uh three down let them back in it thoughts here tim i mean this uh, is a tough, tough question to answer oh yeah yeah you, well, you know the free i mean the hey i've already you know the freeman hype yeah it's it's a bit crazy there's no doubt about it i mean but 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 I think his hype's been more on the recruiting trail. He's been unbelievable on the recruiting trail. And obviously he had a really good, you know, he's built a solid defense at Cincinnati, no doubt about that. But um, no, I don't think the moment was too big. I, You go back and I, I'm sitting there watching this football game and they, they, they kept giving up the edges and the counter. They, you know, they gave up uh, some of those big counter runs that they gave up tonight were against three man, three down linemen, linebackers trying to extend out, you know, to buzz outside for pass coverage and whatnot. There was a lot of times he only had one linebacker in the box and it looked like Florida state was just checking, checking to the run. Going out. Yeah, but uh, yeah. a lot of me was the edges. They gave up the edges a lot. 
in the three down linemen. <laughs> Chief Brody, Marcus Van Gorder. Someone we saw someone comment that. I don't know if it was you, Chief, uh, or somebody uh, else earlier in the show. And uh I mean, I don't care who you are, that's funny. Like that that that's yeah, that's, that's funny. funny. That's funny. There, there's right, no doubt man. about it. That's funny. I got man, a lot to talk about. Jack, let's just let's just go to Jack Cohn. Um, I mean, I know we've touched on him, but sure. um, in, in you know the arm strength and, and whatnot. But those numbers, goodness gracious, let me pull them up here. Um, I mean, outstanding. Um, Twenty six of thirty five, um, and, and I mean they, they were even better early in the earlier in the game through like uh, three quarters or so. It was like four completions. Twenty six yeah. thirty five three sixty six four touchdowns. The pick was you know on the last yeah, play yeah. of regulation, so that. can't hold that against them. Yep. I mean, if you're like if you're a Notre Dame fan, are you feeling better about Cone than you did before this game? Like, what's your opinion? Um, I mean, what what did you really learn from Jack Cone? You know what? I I mean, seriously, watching him, I felt like it was. You know, him at Wisconsin. I watched some of his Wisconsin games. Before. Is that a good I thing? Mean, he, Is that a bad thing? You know what? He He's really good within certain, you know, markers on the football field. He throws some really good balls, no doubt about that. Even, you know, a couple of those night, you know, the night, I mean, the, the, the catch by Wilkins was unbelievable. You know, even Austin, Austin's touchdown was great. Um, I thought early on, I thought they went way too much to Michael Mayer. I mean, they were just, I mean, that that's probably why he had drops. The poor guy's exhausted. And, uh, I mean, they, it seemed like they, yeah, what do you have? Nine catches right there. It looked like they went targets. to Mayor. Oh, my, it felt like 22 <laughs> watching the game. And, um, it looked like they went to him a little bit early. You know, yeah, you know, that was probably nitpicking. I mean, he threw behind the first down marker a couple times, probably released it too quick, but, uh, you know, and then I, I know you and I had chatted at halftime about the targets to the wide receivers very, very limited in the first half. You know, you could, de- I mean, the, the ball game was built around getting it to, you know, the backs and Michael Mayer and uh, only a couple of targets. I know Lindsay only had, uh, you know, he had a w- one catch in the first half. Wilkins had no targets. I, I believe Austin only had one in the first half as well, but um, they got some wide receivers. I thought they were going to go uh, up top more early on. And it looked like, you know, they, they milked it, wanted to go short. And go from there, and, and their strength is Mayor and uh, and Kyron Williams, no doubt about that. All right, we got another super chat here from Frankie. That DJ Airhorn is uh, getting its uh, work in today. Uh, big super chat here, really appreciate this. He says, "Go Irish, win is a win. I'll take it." Cheers from Hong Kong, Frankie H, Notre Dame class of two thousand seven. I uh, really appreciate the support here, Frankie. Nice. Hope you're enjoying the show here. Um, what what about Kyle Hamilton? We got to talk about just how good that dude is at football. That interception. I really wish I could play the video, but as soon as I do, yeah. um, I would get a copyright strike from ESPN. Yeah. So um, I don't want that to happen. But uh, let's pull up the well, defense. Well, both of them. I mean, both of them were out. I mean, obviously the one coming from the other side. It's like, I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, that's like, I mean, that's. I mean, I mean, what do you, I mean, I'm like lost for words. That was like, when you saw that and you're like, really, <laughs> really, that was unbelievable football play. No doubt about that. Yeah. I mean, both of them were, were, were amazing and uh, outstanding. Uh, you know, he, he's so athletic, you know, the one touchdown they hit, you know, the big touchdown where they, you know, they ran by Houston on the, you know, we call that a, you know, a push fade where the slot runs right by, a fade right past Houston where you, you know, I don't know if you saw the TV where they were literally reading Kyle Hamilton's eyes, making yeah. him jump one way. And he's wide open. That was just like the ACC championship game there against Clemson when Trevor Lawrence did the same thing to him and they beat Sean Crawford. But uh, he's, he, he's a freakish athlete going back is uh, when they started doing the three, a lot of the three man front, Kyle Hamilton was down in the box. I was surprised he wasn't playing a little bit more deeper than that but they had him down in the box a lot in that during fsu's comeback yeah well i think we got another super chat we're we are uh, really rolling in here bill uh drop us another one we really appreciate this he said notre dame needs to provide post-game counseling if they're going to let opponents back in the game and florida state even did had that they went for it at their own 30 something yard line so desperate mm-hmm. in the third quarter 
Um, yeah. I mean, just think about if Notre, and, and Notre, I believe Notre Dame scored a touchdown after that drive. Just think about if yeah. um, the Irish uh, weren't gifted that one. Um, <laughs> such a crazy football game. Um, I don't know if you're if you. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. I was gonna say no. You're right. When you say crazy football game, it's it was uh, it was just a, it was every, you know it, it's it's interesting because it was so many things. I was like thinking about coming into this game. It's, it's just the emotion. It just felt like Florida State was just not going to quit. They were just they just kept coming and coming. But at the same token, you gotta give you know kill you know Coach Kelly a high five in them because they pulled it out. They pulled it out, and that goes back to the Brian Kelly 2.0, where the reboot since 2017, the mental makeup of this program since the 2016 meltdown is is exactly what happened. They hunkered down, they made the stop on D, and they went it in OT. So here's a question for you, Tim. Um, you Remember that Louisville game last year? Irish won 12-7. to um, yeah. I think Ben Skoranek was the leading receiver with, like, at least of the receiver group with like two catches for, for 20 yards. Like it, it was a really ugly <laughs> win at home. Yep. Take, take the home field advantage out of it. Right. Cause obviously a road win is going to be more impressive than a home win, but would you rather have like that grinded out ugly defensive struggle game or something like this where your offense is great, but your defense is not very good. I mean, for me, it's it's an offensive game now. I feel like I'd rather see my offense, you know, rocking and, and, and the defense can figure it out. But vice versa, I wouldn't feel so comfortable. What do you think as a football coach, Tim? Well, no, I mean, this is – I mean, tonight is going to be – I mean, there's a thousand uh, messages that Coach Kelly and, sta- and the staff are going to have. But it, it goes back to they won. They're going to get back to South Bend at 5 a.m. They got to do a quick turnaround, get ready – you know, for, you know, Toledo next week, but um, believe me, it's a heck of a lot more fun to do everything after a win. And I think even in this game, I think they can't, they're going to come out of it with a, with way more positives because as, as you and I were talking, I'm sure people that were watching the game and all that, they, they felt like Notre Dame just like went to a different level in the third quarter. And, and how do we right. just keep that going? And, um, and that's going to be a learning thing. Maybe instead of taking the gas off, they just, you know, if they would have just kept going, going, going and, uh, instead of relenting, but at the same time, the humidity, the heat, maybe they did too much stuff on defense. You know, maybe, you know, that's another learning thing out of game one. All right. We do got another super chat here. Everyone appreciate everyone who's with us live. Hit that thumbs up on this video. Um, you know, if you're watching back, continue to, to hit that thumbs up for us if you haven't yet. Um, Ryan, I love this comment. Like, calm down, give Freeman time. He doesn't even have his own personal time yet. Um, that that's 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 funny. Um, like, look. Oh, personnel. He says oh. personnel. So. Oh, I thought he meant like personal time. Like, he can't even right. like take a vacation day yet because he's so new on the job. I thought that's what he meant. Yeah. But personnel. No, I agree. Okay. Th- that makes sense. With, and, and that's also true. Um. I mean, look, I had joked about, you know, everyone's loving Freeman in the offseason, but once he gives up a, a, a first down or a field goal, yeah, everyone's yeah. going to be calling for his job. I, I didn't – I mean, I predicted 27-20. Like, I thought it was going to be um, a much more um, defensive game than, than 41-38. Um, you liked Notre Dame to cover, but mm-hmm. I know you kind of just threw your score prediction together. Um, you didn't, yeah, because exactly. it was like the first game, but, um, yeah, 35, 26, 36, 26. Yeah. It was something like that. I did real quick. So Charles appreciate this three, three, five against run. Obvious offensive attack is hurtful without making a single adjustment is painful. Clark Lee and Elko always adjusted to gameplay. I mean, are you concerned much about the defense? I mean, in any thoughts to this comment? No, I no, no, I'm not I'm not concerned about the defense because I think so much of it was was just, you know, some basic fundamentals. I think that's what they're I mean, they're gonna see that on film. What I saw watching live and rewinding on a few key plays and all that is the edges. They gave up the edges at times. And uh even on the big the big counter run, they only had one linebacker in the box on the big counter run. They had one guy fit. And, and I think it was Drew White was trying to come all the way across from the other side, from the Y side, and couldn't get there. And Hart got turned around in the boundary corner, got turned around. The guy runs 89 yards. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not too concerned about this game. No, if, if, if we came away from one thing tonight, 
when Notre Notre Dame Notre Dame's D line was was monsters. Yes, those dudes were getting after yes. it. And I know I sent you a text like I was a little concerned about MTA moving from three tech to DN. That dude could play. He, he's going to be an NFL yeah. strong side defensive end. He's a, he's a heck of a football player. And Tim's um, super chat from Tim Carthy, real appreciate. He says, how about not taking the the foot off of the gas pedal? That goes back to that 38 yeah. to 20. I, I felt that the offense and defense, you know, kind of got vanilla um, and conservative. I mean, am, am I crazy here, Tim Hyde? No, you're not crazy. I mean, we all, we all saw it. We all saw it. And all it takes is just one, one drive. And FSU got the one drive. But also, um, going back, a big part of it was, I mean, let's don't, I mean, I mean, let's don't forget the, the, if I could say it, the brutal call by the ref, the punter Bramley gets destroyed and it's a five yard penalty. Yeah. If Notre Dame gets the 15 yarder, who's to say they don't go down there right back up by a couple scores, game's over. That, I mean, I mean, you, you still have to punt. It's, it's the momentum. FSU just had momentum. And in college football, that is real in college football. All right. Well, keep, you know, send it in the super chats, guys. We will get to your questions right away. i uh, got one other topic I wanted to get to before we just go into straight questions from our YouTube audience. And I wanted to talk about the, the Notre Dame receiving group. It seemed a little mm-hmm. bit like you know, a continuation of last year when it comes to its mayor, it's, you know, Tremble last year, obviously, but he's no, he's no longer on the team. Um, he's with the, the Panthers now in the NFL. It's, it's, it's the tight ends and the running backs and not a ton to the receivers. Um, I mean, you got Michael Mayer targeted 13 times, Kyron Williams, six times. Now it was, it was Kevin Austin was the one that they targeted a good bit. Braden Lindsay, Two receptions, 39 yards on three targets. Joe Wilkins, one of my guys, that's I, I love Joe Wilkins, yeah. got in there and made that heck of a play with two guys Thank around God. him. Um, you know, was, wasn't the best ball from Cone, but Wilkins just made a big-time play. I mean, it, it, right now with the receiving group, just the receivers, right, That's that doesn't include all pass catchers, it seems like Kevin Austin and, and then a bunch of dudes, you know, like Avery Davis. I love Avery Davis. He, he was missing an action in terms – I mean, he didn't get a single target. No. No, no. And that was – and that's surprising. That's – I mean, some of the plays Avery Davis made last year were – I mean, were outstanding. And I was even saying that during the game, like, uh, where's Avery Davis? Just, just a quick something to him. Let him run because he is fast. Yeah. You know, even like, you know, down the middle. I was kept waiting for a play action. I know the announcers had talked about that a few times. Oh, this is a good time for a play action. It's like, where's the Avery Davis, you know, the, the like the big pass he caught against Clemson. But you're right, none. Even Wilkins for the amazing catch he made, he only got one one shot. And then Lindsay, I know he had the, he had the you know the two catches and then the one the one underthrow. There's the other guy who's fast as could be. I mean, Notre Dame's got some outside guys. There's no doubt about that. You know, so I would I was a little surprised early that they just didn't go up top and try and just boom take you know take this game over right away. I, I hope the DJ air horn for people listening watching this. It's not. I hope it's not like too loud. It's like just you know it's freaking you out every time we play because we've been playing a lot here. Um, Chris says this is a great point. If FSU doesn't yeah. watch the PAT, they win by a point. I mean, when was that? Did you remember? What they also was, got a two pointer. Let's don't forget. They yeah, so that, that's one of those things. I yeah. I can't remember what quarter it happened, but I feel like it was early enough in the game that, you know, it's, if that if that yeah. PAT wasn't botched, something else would have happened that um would have would have changed the game as well. But I I see what you're saying, Chris. Definitely a good point. Appreciate um the super chat, Charles. Going back to the four down linemen, it's such a strength of the team. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't know why, you know, they, they went to more three down, but, um, you know, Charles Clark says four down and a linebacker down to set the edge. Our D linemen were savages tonight. She need a little bit of support. They were great. You know, Riley Mills yeah. played well coming into the game. Foskey mm-hmm. was great. Um, you know, MTA, um, pull up his stats. I mean, here. he was, he was just, I, I don't I mean, yeah, exactly. He had one tackle disgusting. and that was it, but he, it seemed oh, that he, he did was things collapsing outside the, the, the box score. Yeah. Oh, but he was just blowing tackles backwards. Same thing with Heinish inside, you know, and that's, you know, going back to, I know I made the comment a, you know, a couple of minutes ago about fundamentals was the edges, but even the tackles. I mean, you go back, 
I mean, it looked like Notre Dame had a half a dozen TFLs, you know, tackles for losses and some sacks where they just let him scramble outside a few times. Notre Dame's front is real. Yeah. Those guys could play. Deep. It's deep, yes. too. I mean, Notre Dame was out. Jordan Patelho today. Uh, don't have the, the details on, on why he was out. Also, Logan Diggs and Sebo Flemister. Um, your four and three running backs, respectively, also were out. Super Chat's flying in. Appreciate you guys watching. We will be doing this after every game this season, 15 minutes afterwards. Bloom and Gold will be going live on YouTube to live react and, and take your questions. Says thank. Pete says thanks, Mike and Tim. Rest in peace. Rest in peach. <sighs> Been talking too much. Rest in peace, Coach Bobby Bowden. Um, yeah, that was Florida State's um, first game since uh, Coach Bowden's passing. Um also want to mention this was you know uh, our first you know game cover Notre Dame football without loose emoji um, very emotional um, you know when when I was reminded of that I, I yeah it, it, it's it's tough you know it, it, I, just the other day I wanted to call Lou about something I picked up my phone and I was like Shh, I don't know if I can curse on here I don't know if no, you will censor me but no he's missed the, best. the guy there's no doubt about it he's the best yeah, he's the best. Miss yeah. Lou Samoji. Um, Lou, hope you uh, were able to watch this game in heaven and enjoy that that you didn't have to stay up until five a.m. To, uh, tonight and into the morning uh, writing stories for our magazine. Um, another super chat here, Jacob Dunn. Um, hearing Patelho bomb and Moala uh, might have gotten banged up, um, which uh, was personnel limits in the second half, which led to Marcus's shift. I, I, Patelho definitely, um, yeah. yeah, he just didn't play. Moala, I did see on social media. He was in a boot. Someone. Yeah, he was in yeah. a boot. Bauman's yeah, a tight a end, so I'm not sure if you're referring to someone else, maybe. Um, did, so did personnel limit it? I, I don't know. No. I think they're guys, I mean, the guys that, you know, you know, we've been hearing about all camp and whatnot, and Coach Kelly's talked about, those are the dudes that played. Yeah, you know, there was no, like, you know, secret guy out there or whatnot uh everyone i thought everyone we expected to play played i thought one of the big stars tonight just real quick was uh how about prior yes the speed he showed Started. that guy was yeah. i mean my god he could run fast straight line can he oh yeah i'll be interested to see the snap counts um and and who played the most at that rover position um hey you know what we haven't done yet is Give some major kudos to Jonathan Dewar. I know we mentioned oh, that he. I mean, like geez. they had that. He he was. I thought he was really good in 2019. 2020 wasn't as good. He comes back, takes that extra year of COVID eligibility, and seems like he's yeah. back to his form in 2019. Rock star, made two field goals. Kids got stones. Um, good for oh, him. That, oh oh yeah. I mean, well, wasn't he uh, blue and gold's number 25? He was, yeah, he was in our top 25. Top 25. And that's exactly. why you see it today. There um, you go. All right. Um, well, well, let's get into questions. Um, of course, if you want to guarantee we'll answer your question, drop that super chat. Uh, really appreciate you guys supporting us, um, what we're doing here um, at Blue and Gold. Um, scrolling through, lots of uh, comments, you know, loving up loose emoji. Uh, continue to keep his family in your thoughts and prayers as well as us at Blue and Gold because uh, we we certainly miss his um, leadership and not only his content because the dude was just an animal. Um, certainly miss him. What happened to Fisher? Um, Jeffrey asks. I know you replayed. I didn't get to see exactly mm -hmm. what happened. Tell us what happened. And then I, I, want, I, want, I want to hear your thoughts on Michael Carmody because I know there was some bad from Carmody. Um, where he, he pinched a little too far inside and, and basically left it, let a free rusher go to, to Cone. Oh. But then he also yeah. had that, he, he pancaked uh, number 11, Jermaine Johnson, I believe. So yeah, what happened exactly. to Fisher and what do you think about Carmody? Well, Fisher, uh, Fisher got hurt on the, on the, uh, the Wilkins touchdown. So I'm sitting there watching and you see the whole team, you know, running down there and you don't see a uh, 54 who, by the way, I know you've met. How big is that guy? Uh, uh, so I'm 6'2", and a little bit more heavy than I would like to be. Let's just leave it at that. Um, Blake made me feel like a shrimp. I mean, the first uh, oh. the first time I met him was um, it was October last year, 
And I, I'm like looking up to him the first five, 10 minutes or so. I'm just talking about like, holy crap, you're freaking huge. Um, yeah, he, he's a big dude, he, even bigger personality. Love him. Um, he's going to make some NIL money for sure. Oh, he's, 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 he's so, he's so big. I mean, I, 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 I know I keep comparing him to Orlando Pace. A- anyone out there, if you don't know Orlando Pace is or whatnot, I mean, just seriously, just Google both of them. They're, I mean, they, those two guys are twins. They're unbelievable. He was playing his tail off, by the way, before he got hurt. For, uh, I think the first run play went away from him. He got blown backwards. Outside of that, he was playing his tail off, and they even had a couple nice runs behind him. Uh, him and Mayer were sealing the edges a few times. But what happened on the Wilkins touchdown, so the very next series, uh, they get the ball, and I see you know Carmody in 68, and I was like, whoa. So I – just hit pause real quick, rewind, see what was going on. And I didn't see, like I told you, 54 running down there in the touchdown. And then finally in the blip, you could see him. He's stuffs number 11, Johnson, the Georgia transfer, who just had a field day today, stuffs him on the touchdown pass. And then out of the blink of the eye, Kyron Williams, it looked like Kane Madden were blocking a guy. And it looked like Madden ran into Fisher's knee. Yeah. And all of a sudden he was on the ground. They picked him up. Didn't see him walking in at halftime or any of that stuff. So they must got him in the locker room immediately, you know, to take uh, x-rays and things of that nature. But uh, I thought he was playing outstanding. Fingers crossed he gets back because, I mean, that dude's a, I mean, he's a top 10 draft pick. Uh, he's going to be unbelievable. And I thought Car- I thought Carmody played well. I mean, he's the third tackle. He's a redshirt freshman uh, out there, was busting his tail. Be- go back on the, on the one-yard line run Kyron Williams has and watch – Harmony just flat back Johnson, just put him on his back. <laughs> nice <laughs> nice save nice. there, Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be nice, but uh, he played. He played good. He he gave up one sack. Probably came inside. Probably thought he had help. It's all those little technical things. Us just watching the game, probably aren't aware of. But um, you know, we got to get Fisher back. He is. He's a bona fide star. Another super chat here. Uh, Michael McKinley, really appreciate this. The defensive line was great. Then the linebackers weren't doing their jobs. Who was responsible for the big runs? Um, I mean, that, that's putting you on the spot, Tim. Any Counter. Thoughts? They, ran, they ran some counters. They ran some counters. The DNs, you know, were wrong-arming, spilling it outside. And, and some of those were, like, you know, when they were in their nickel. So they had more DBs out there. You could go back and see a little bit and uh, whatnot. So um, the linebacker, you know, a, lot, a lot of times, you know, they always had one. He was blowing it up, but they're always a gap short. They're always a body short on the edges out there at times. So could have been the DB. The corner support was one time with uh, Cam Hart. I know a DJ Brown whiffed on one Yeah, that just busted it outside. So and I remember it, it on that more- one. Shane but, Simon seemed to miss the tackle, but yes. he was getting held like crazy. So it was yeah, crazy. It was, it was wild that he was able to even get an arm on Corbin, the running back, because he was being held so yeah. bad. But I digress. Yeah. And that Corbin's a tank. I mean, that's, that's a big dude. He's a, he's a tank. Yeah. Couple injury updates. We did get um, the, the the question earlier about Bauman. Um, I, I was thinking that you, you uh, maybe confused him for someone else, that earlier poster. Um, but I mean, it, it, he's not either way going to make a huge impact whether he's in there or not on the offense, but injury updates from Kelly's tweet from uh, Patrick Engel on Paul Moala. Kelly said he's going to have, uh, an MRI. It didn't look good for Paul. Uh, so keep him your thoughts and prayers. And Kevin Bauman has a knee injury and will need an X-ray. Um, so that is the update there on, on a couple of injuries. All right, continuing down the comments, just tons and tons of them. I uh, really appreciate um, everyone who has joined us live here. Um, let's go back to uh, this scene. Scroll around, guys. Um, Coach Humph, how likely is Combs' arm strength and mobility widen the door to allow snaps for Buckner to play at some point this season? Not a starter, just situationally. Love all the work you guys do. We appreciate the comment, Coach Humph. What do you think, Tim? You seem uh, You seem like you have an opinion. Yeah, I mean, why would you? I mean, why? I mean, there's no. I mean, if you if you're gonna get Buckner a few, I mean, go out and blow some of these teams out. You know that you're gonna blow them out and let him get his feet wet, get ready for next year. But other than that, you're not gonna. I mean, Brian Kelly is not gonna put in 
a backup quarterback just to get him a couple plays and whatnot. You know, he's never, he's never done that. So I don't see him doing that now. Yeah. His arm strength, it is what it is. He's not going to, doesn't have a cannon. His mobility is very, is very limited. I mean, he's not going to be Ian book who those are some of those hidden yards. Notre Dame's great rush offense. The last couple of years is Ian book scrambling. So yeah, I don't see Buckner getting in except for when they blow out a couple teams down the road. Yeah, and you would think Drew Pine would get those reps first, and if Brendan Clark is fully healthy, damn, maybe he's third. I don't know. He's he's that yeah. might be later in the season. Buckner was the number three quarterback on the depth chart. Um, JD asks, "What do you think about the play calling?" Um, seemed like it was there was some ups and and some downs for Tommy Reese in this game. What do you think, Tim? Uh, well, you know what? I'm look I'm I'm looking right here. Here here here's here's Florida State where where they just got within three. Notre Dame gets the ball back five and a half minutes to go. Florida State jumps off sides. It's first and five. You tell me you can't get five yards. It's first and five. Williams, one yard run. But, and I know everyone may think it's conservative, conservative. Next play, they try throwing to Michael Mayer, second and four, incomplete pass. Bad. Uh, ball was low and, uh, low and away to uh, Mike Mayer. Third and four, that's the Carmody sack on the next play. So, they get an offsides, first down, run the ball, second and third down. They did try passing the ball. They got nothing. So uh, that that's just a little snapshot I hear I got right here in front of me. So that they, you know, they tried at times, just a couple, it just felt like once again, momentum. <laughs> momentum. Momentum just took it, you know, when things go bad, sometimes they go bad. And uh that sure, you know, I mean, look at Mike Mayer, right? You know, he catches the ball right before the end of the, you know, the game there. They kick a game winning field goal. We don't go to OT. Notre Dame doesn't go to OT. So, you know, a couple things happen at the end of the day, Mike. Notre Dame won by three. Tim, what do you think about uh, this? This is just a personal thing that I kind of feel uh, passionate about. But before we get to that question, um, we got a super chat um, from Armand saying, great work, team. Looking forward to gelling offensive line and um, better uh, play calling uh, by both sides of the ball. That's the glass half full look. I know we got a lot of comments that are much more glass half empty as Notre Dame fans are very passionate. Um, and look, they just want to see their team, um, you know, play their very best. Um, but a win is a win on the road against a good FSU team. Um, you know, Milton threw the ball pretty well in that, late in that fourth oh, yeah. quarter. Travis did not. I still think that's a pretty good FSU team with a really good defensive line. Um, but yeah. I mean, still, that offensive line can gel. Um, you just hope that Blake Fisher comes back and, and is in good shape. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that Florida State team is going to go to a bowl game. They're going to win some football games. If they play with that heart and that energy that they played with tonight, they're, they're, going, to, they're going to a bowl game after three years of really bad football there in Tallahassee. And as far as the old line, I think they're going to gel. You know, I think a little bit is um, – Notre Dame's had some big dudes up front. You know, Correll looked a little obviously light, but he's so athletic and plays with yeah. so much energy. You know, Lug was his typical self. Kane Madden, you know, a little bit obviously different brand of football and whatnot, but I thought he played well. At, um, I didn't see Patterson. Probably didn't watch him because I was watching so many of the other new guys, so to speak. So I didn't really concentrate on Patterson as much. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna come together. There's no doubt about that. Another super chat here. Appreciate this. Ian, uh, please explain our need to run the ball, especially with slow developing run plays. When we pushed it, we scored at will. Something has to change. So, Ian, I mean, are you, you suggested an air raid? I mean, um, uh, Cohen certainly had a good game throwing the football, but, I mean, Notre Dame's bread and butter is going to be running the ball, um, and that's certainly what the, the personnel suggests with the with the great tight ends and the running backs. Um, and, and then the receivers, like we talked about earlier, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I like them. I, I, I like Wilkins. I like keys who didn't really see much at all. He, I, mm. I remember seeing him just a little bit. Lorenzo styles got in there a little bit, but Avery Davis, MIA, Braden Lindsay, um, two or three catches on, 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 excuse me, two catches on three targets, but I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, you, you got to stick with the run if you're Tommy Reese, right, Tim? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're going to do, I mean, that second quarter, that second quarter it seemed like they were, Brian Kelly was just like, you know, run the ball. It seemed like they ran the ball a lot in the second quarter. And then the third quarter, they got the turnovers. They came out, chucked it up, got the lead. 
and whatnot. But um, they're going to run the ball. I mean, I mean, Brian Kelly wants to run the ball. I mean, they're not they're not going to go you know nuts. They're going to do whatever it takes to win. As tonight they threw for three hundred sixty six yards. So I mean, they're going to do whatever it, it takes to win the ball game at the end of the day. But yeah, I mean, they're going to run the ball. Kyron Williams is a heck of a football player. Yeah, he is. I mean, they got to get the. They, he's got to. He's got to carry twenty times a game. Just watching him, the way he plays and his energy, he's got to touch the ball 20 times a game. Yeah, we got a, a comment here. Conan lost his starting job. I feel like Conan is a, is a talk show host. Um, <laughs> if you're talking about Jack Cohn, I certainly don't think he lost his starting job. Uh, Irish no. AJ, the flea flicker and the quarterback power is only real sus to Beck calls by Reese tonight, in my opinion. I mean, look, Tim, being you know, off, like if that flea flicker worked, and that QB power worked, everyone would be calling Reese a genius right now. And it's just one of those things. The, the QB power one I did not get. Like the, like, uh, just it was third and five. I think it was third and sense. five. It's like just throw a you know, five-yard pass to Mike Mayer, which they had done, it seemed like, 12 times going up to that point over exaggeration. I, I, I don't get but, uh, that when that is not his game at all. But I'll tell you what. Look, but, but I'll tell you what, though. If, if Zeke Correll, he trips. If Zeke Correll doesn't trip, Jack Cohn runs for a first down. Yeah. Okay. He really does. And the other thing, when you watch that play, I rewatched that play about four or five times. The the right side had an amazing seal on the edge where they're pulling with uh, Correll and Mike Mayer. And um, if Cohn just follows outside, he has a first down. He cut it inside. And 20 chased him down from behind on that play. But, um, no, I mean, he was just – all he had to do was run outside. He gets first down. So I know everyone, as soon as it happened, probably everyone freaked out, things of that nature. But that's game one adjustments. I, yeah, yeah, probably Jack Cohen never ran that at Wisconsin. So, uh, you know, that was something new for him as well. All right. we I'm sure everyone heard um, the, uh, the, the the quote by uh, Brian Kelly after the game. Um, the, uh, I'm in favor of execution. Maybe our entire team needs to be executed after tonight. That certainly was um, – a uh, interesting um, quote there, but apparently that was um, Kelly was asked about it after the game. Um, it's an old John McKay uh, quote that he used after the game. Um, so yes, Brian Kelly does not want to execute his players. Um, so just for those who are, um, are wondering about that, cause I certainly was, I, I have not heard that quote um, before. So got a couple super chats to get to here. Um, find this, uh, Ethan, appreciate the super chat. Yeah. Tackling was slop, sloppy, uh, should have had yeah. so many tackles for loss. Secondary is a worry besides Hamilton, not impressed with Freeman debut. I think if we had Marcus Freeman on this show and, uh, now that I mentioned it, Marcus, uh, pr- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Um, I mean, if, yeah, if we had Marcus on here, I'm sure he would say the same thing. I'm not impressed with my debut either. You know, Florida State dropped 38 points and really wasn't that impressive in the passing game. Um, what was their yeah. passing stats? Uh, I'll pull this oh, well, that, I mean, I, I mentioned 178 that earlier. yards. Right How much? 178 yards, two touchdowns, yeah. three picks. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the big play, they had a 90 yard. I mean, the 90 yard run was just bad fits. To, I mean, I mentioned earlier the tackles for loss. They had a handful of, Go back and rewatch it. They were in the backfield so much and just didn't wrap up things of that nature. And um, they're going to get better. That Notre Dame defense, they got they got some dudes out there. They're going to be they're going to get better. Yeah. They're going to get better. Yeah. So the the secondary, I mean, Houston Griffith, you know, he, he gave up that touchdown, but that was, I mean, that was what cover one. I mean, it the was straight. It was, yeah, it was straight man free. Yeah, man had Kyle free. Hamilton in the middle of the field. Straight that's man tough. free. If you're a safety on a slot, I mean, that's yeah, that's tough. That's yeah, that's not really. What, yeah. Uh, and before, yeah, and right before that, I know you and I were chatting about how FSU had not taken one shot deep. That was the first time they mm-hmm. went up top. Went went up top. So, uh, super chat here from Ian um, says uh, your response made my point, Mike. This isn't 2020. Thanks. We got to win. Go Irish. I'm gonna be honest with you, Ian. I have no idea what response I made, but I'm glad it made your point. And uh, I, I hope I didn't look in it like an idiot uh, on the way um, to, to making your point. Brian says, how was there not an intentional grounding call after the ruling on 
of Milton's hands going forward. We, I've seen this comment a few times. Glad we got a super chat for it so I can make sure we addressed it. Is it, you, you, I'm sure you, you, you know what the, the question here is referring to, Tim. Is it sure. a matter of because he was being hit? That it, yes, it didn't, he was being it, hit. It's rule? forward action. It's forward action. So he's basically being hit and the ball's coming out. So it's it, it's forward action, and is it also a matter of intent with the intentional grounding rule? Yes, okay. yes, exactly. So. There's no intent there. He's trying to throw the ball; it's coming out, even though, yeah, it looked like he was trying to bring it back in. And you get into the Tom Brady, you know, don't bring up the if there's any you know, Raider fans in here with the you know the Tuck rule with, with Tom Brady back in the heyday. But uh, that's what it felt like watching that. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, Notre Dame's gonna have its Tuck rule game here. But uh, yeah, it was intent. He's trying to throw the ball even though it does look like he's trying to bring it back inside and it comes out. It's one of those bam, bam type of plays. Yeah. Which goes back to momentum. It seemed like FSU had a bunch of those, you know, e- even a couple fumbles that were on there. How about the fumble? Like the Florida state guy kicks it Two Notre Dame guys have the ball and they don't get it. And it's it still did, leaked out. This just goes know? back to just hey. get out of there with the win. A lot of, you know, there's certainly some sloppy things, a lot of 50 50 things that might not have gone, gone Notre Dame's way. Um, the Bobby Bowden factor, the this is, I mean, some of these Notre Dame players, like Chris Tyree, has never played in a like a stadium like that. And oh, yeah. he's a sophomore. Like, there's a lot of these guys I haven't seen environments like this before. Kyron Williams, even. I mean, he was a freshman in 2019, he didn't play really in 2019. Yeah. Um, exactly. Talk about the Michigan game, so to speak, right? Is the he, one lone. Right. But what I'm saying was he game. didn't really play. He played four games, used that, yep. you know, the, the, the four game rule and reserve, reserve your eligibility, but he wasn't out there. He was just on the bench for those games. And then 2020, he doesn't have those environments that he's on the field taking that on. So this was like a new experience. Just a lot of this, I'm kind of looking at it from glass half full saying, you know, some of these, you know, I think you can be, a little bit optimistic with um you know how you look at this game but hey uh, well well let's just well let's just say you know everyone take a deep breath and a pause is i mean let's don't forget 2016 where was notre dame i was gonna Labor bring day that up weekend you texted Labor me day about weekend, the texas sunday night prime time austin texas hot humid that crowd was rocking that night and notre dame lost that game and started the 2016 yeah. meltdown Notre Dame obviously is regrouped and they won this, won this thing. I mean, the whole thing, I'm like, oh, don't tell me this 2016 again, you know. Yeah. But once again, I mean, you're not, you know, you're not starting on the road at Purdue. Okay. No disrespect to the Boilermakers, obviously, but seriously, you're not at Purdue. You're at, you're in Tallahassee. Did yeah. people not hear that crowd? That place was rocking tonight. Oh, we got another super chat in here. I uh, really appreciate all the, the continued support. And basically what Michael's saying here is, is what are our, our kind of sentiments right here. Uh, you know, he says, thanks for taking time to be thorough with your responses. We're venting, but your explanations are helping us understand the game better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, for Thank the you. kind words um, and the super chat. Um, and we got another one here. And this is something that I feel passionate about, you know, I learned a lot about being a reporter and a journalist and just a, a fan of college football from Lou Samoji, um, our late great mm-hmm. senior editor, who would always point out, you know, Notre Dame, and he wouldn't excuse the Irish for losing those quote unquote big games. You know, you're, you know, facing Alabama's and the Clemson's of the world, but he would say, you don't want to forget about Notre Dame winning the games that they're supposed to post 2016 the Irish win the games that they're supposed to. Like, they don't have those upset specials. Like, should they have beat Georgia at least one of those times? Yes. Should they have at least, you know, God forbid, made things competitive against Michigan in 2019? Absolutely. But, like, Mm -hmm. Virginia Tech in 2019, they win that game. 2018, you know, uh, Ball State, Vanderbilt, ugly. They win the games. So, Ethan Super Chatty saying – this would have been one of the worst losses in the Kelly era. Just letting that lead slip away. I don't understand FSU one series, two straight wildcat plays, but like it would have been one of the worst losses of Kelly era. Um, I, I don't know about one of the worst. I mean, it, it wouldn't have been a great. Well, the loss, worst but... one. Well, the worst one is Michigan 2011. I mean, that's yeah. Or is that worse than well, just because of the you know the Desmond Robinson going crazy? Uh, but 
but back to my point, Bring like, but Notre Dame wins these games. Like, they get mm-hmm. out of there with a win. Um, and that's kind of my point is that they – it would have been one of the worst losses, but it wasn't. You know, wasn't. my butthole was clenched watching the end of that game saying, man – I really hope they pull this one out there, not because I'm a Notre Dame homer, but because this live show will be a lot more enjoyable um, if if Notre Dame wins. Uh, Um, But, you know, Notre Dame fans still certainly not, um, you know, pleased with the outcome of the game, but a win is a win. And another super chat. How about this? David coming from Australia saying far too much stress for a Monday morning. Um, two BS flags, two bad drop balls, good and bad, onwards and upwards. Great format, fellas. Go Irish. David, um, we really appreciate you and the support here. Um, we're we're going to wrap up pretty soon here. Um, any more Super Chats, drop them. We'll get to your questions. Um, let us comment. Where are you, where are you right now? Uh, where are you watching this game from? What state? What country? Uh, make sure you let us know. Um, man, Tim, this was a lot of fun, man. Uh, to have you on your first wow. live show, throwing you in the fire. Um, Mike Goolsby was not, um, he's not able to join us. We're going to have him on at some point. So he's just a very busy man. Um, but we will certainly have Mike Goolsby on, um, throughout the rest of the season. But Tim Hyde certainly will be a staple here for our post game show. Um, Tim, um, Man, cl- closing thoughts on this game unless we get another super chat. I mean, h- how are you going to feel, uh, you know, tomorrow morning waking up thinking about this one? Well, no, I mean, you want to know. I mean, I mean, we've said it 20 times tonight. You want to know. You want to know. You, you know, I keep, I keep going back. You went on the road, one of the, you know, really, really hard places to play. Obviously not recently. And I think the Notre Dame fans are so stuck in this, you know, the, you know, the, the recent, bad Florida state. But as we saw tonight, they got dudes. It's still Florida state. They got some football players and Notre Dame went on the road. Tough, tough, gritty, even early on when they were down, let's don't forget they were down early and boom, storm back, you know, you know, took the lead right before halftime, had an amazing third quarter and just looked a little tired, a little gassed. Florida state got the momentum going, you know, boom, rallies up. Mackenzie Melton, I mean, seriously, amazing story for that for that young man to come out there and the way he played in that fourth quarter. But it wasn't a fairy tale ending. It was a fairy tale ending for for Notre Dame. The defense held there in OT, and then offensive uh, offensive line just knew, hey, we got a kicker that could boot it from anywhere. It's you know keep it wherever he wants it, which he must want on that right hash, and he kicked it right down the middle of the field, you know, right down the goalpost there, and a huge win on the road. You know, and then next week, home opener. I know it's going to be a short week, you know, playing Toledo. I know everyone's going to think it's Mac, but I think Notre Dame's going to come out, you know, they're going to come out roaring next week, home opener, especially a packed house, which they haven't had in uh, quite some time. What, since Vod Tech? Vod Tech 2019, the Ian Book scramble game. Was that senior day? I think that was senior day, 2019. No, was it that was November 2nd game. I think it was. Okay. They played Boston College and Navy. After those two, I think it was Boston. Oh, Baltimore. did they? Okay. I just remember him dancing in. So I, I, I you know, you know good memories. Eh? Exactly. Good, you know, good memories. But a great win. I mean, a great. I mean, seriously, there's so much, you know, they faced some adversity early, rallied, offense sputtered for a little bit. But the fact that we saw, I mean, if they could play that, you know, you'd mentioned earlier, the first and third quarters were just, I mean, they were aggressive. Notre Dame did a little tempo, maybe more tempo going forward. Felt like when they were doing some tempo, they were going fast early in that game, and they, were, and they had some momentum going. Well, that is going to do it for um, our Notre Dame Florida State postgame show. I'm Mike Singer. He's Tim Hyde, and uh, we are going to get some shut-eye here in a little bit, oh, and yeah. uh, we will be back at it uh, on uh, on Monday. Um, and uh, have tons of coverage at blueandgold.com. Uh, our beat writers, Patrick Engel, Tyler Horka, posting stories um, um, all, already, so... Make sure you lock into our YouTube channel. Make sure you, you are stay locked into our podcast and, of course, bloomandgold.com. Appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time.